problem a little closer because I felt like in class I didn't uh, Sue asked about it, but I didn't give a very um, compelling. Um, so I, I want to go through this in a little more depth. So we have the function that equals uh, the natural log of cosine x. So we want to think a few things. Um, where, where natural log is defined and where it's undefined. Um, so it's undefined where any th this thing inside, which happens to be cosine x, where it's less than or equal to zero, it's undefined. And we also know that um, it's going to be negative where the inside is less than one um, but greater than zero. So that's going to give us um, a negative function. And the function is going to equal um, zero where the inside is, is um, one. And then, of course, it would be positive if the inside could ever be uh, more than one. And in this case, we can't. So right off the bat, we know that our um, equation or our function is never going to be positive. Um, now, where cosine x is equal to 1, that's where x is equal to 0, um, or 2 pi, and so on, because f is periodic. Our function is periodic. Um, it also has vertical asymptotes. Um, you can see that if you think of the log function as this is approaching um, 0, we're getting um, more and more negative. So we have asymptotes where cosine x is equal to 0, um, or that's where x is equal to pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. And um, so that gives us a good feel for what, what things are looking like right off the bat. Um, and then, so it shows us that we're going to have some gaps, and then we're going to have some periodic asymptotes, and we're going to have, um, we're never going to be positive, but we're going to touch zero periodically as well. Then we look at the first derivative of this, so um, we take the derivative of natural log of cosine x, we get 1 over cosine x times the derivative of cosine x, which is negative sine x, so we have negative sine x over cosine x. So that function is zero, of course, when negative sine x is equal to zero. So that's where um, x is equal to uh, zero and where, and where it's equal to pi, but pi is in this zone of um, being undefined. All right, um, and then of course 2 pi and on and on because it's periodic, like we said before. Um, the, the derivative of the function is greater than zero um, if you go from the um, undefined section um, up until you get to 2 pi, you're greater than 0. That means you're increasing. And then you're less than 0. Um, you're decreasing from that point. Um, so you see where it, where, it, uh, where the function is 0. That's, that's at 0. And that also happens to be um, where you have a, a max in this case. Um, they're always going to be max because um, we're increasing up into those points and then decreasing after those points. That's what this part says. It tells us where we're increasing, where we're decreasing, and then you have to remember that we have sections where we're undefined. And then when we take the second derivative, you can do the same process. Um, if you do the quotient rule, you end up with a sine squared plus or a negative and then quantity sine squared plus cosine squared so those cancel or they are the, that's the same as one and then you have the denominator squared so we end up with this what that shows us is that this is always going to be negative um, so the curve is always concave and here's an example of what it looks like um, so we can see it around this point um, from pi over two negative pi over two to pi over two and then it has a big gap here, and then does the same thing over and over. So this gap is where the cosine x is negative, and then these are where cosine x is positive. You can see it's increasing, it hits its max point at zero, uh, which is at a y value of zero, and then it starts decreasing. Then you go through your gap, you increase, hit your max, and then decrease. And all the while, 
your concave. Okay, so I hope that was uh, more helpful than my uh, example in class.